this story is really explosive. It shows you how corrupt the the Democrats are and how they're really no different from Republicans. Okay, so Democrats basically wrote House progressives, right? Specifically progressives. They wrote a letter to President Biden uh, in June, but it just came out now and caused a huge scandal. Well, what does this letter say? I'll read it to you in a second. They basically asked Biden to pursue diplomacy with Russia to end the war there, right? They said, listen, this situation with, with, with Ukraine is extremely volatile. We, we could have a nuclear catastrophe. It's affecting um, uh, people's lives worldwide in the U.S., in Ukraine, everywhere. This is very bad. We have to pursue diplomacy while also giving the Ukrainians weapons, right? So they're not saying we want to cut off weapons. Of course, they wouldn't say that because progressives support the military industrial complex, right? But when this letter came out, now they're all embarrassed. Like, in, in the span of 24 hours, they withdrew the letter. Can you believe this? They withdrew the letter, and, I mean, the hypocrisy is just nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. Okay, let me, let me read the letter to you. Here, here it is. It was published October 24th, but like I said, they wrote it in June, allegedly, right? So it's addressed to Biden, and th this is from the, the um, Congressional Progressive Caucus, okay? So this is people like AOC, uh, it's headed by Pramila Jayapal, you have Ro Khanna, blah, 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 right? So I'll just read you the most important parts. They say, um, it is imperative to avoid direct military conflict with Russia, which would lead to World War III, something we must strive to prevent. The risk of nuclear weapons being used has been estimated to be higher now than at any time since the height of the Cold War. Given the catastrophic possibilities of nuclear escalation and miscalculation, which only increase the longer this war continues, we agree with your goal of avoiding direct military conflict as an overriding national security priority. Given the destruction created by this war for Ukraine, and around the world, as well as the risk of catastrophic escalation, we also believe it is in the interests of Ukraine, the United States, and the world to avoid a prolonged conflict. For this region, we urge you to pair the military and economic support the U.S. has given Ukraine with a proactive diplomatic push. A proactive diplomatic push. Redoubling efforts to seek a realistic framework for a ceasefire. This is consistent with your recognition, with Biden's recognition, that there's, quote, going to have to be a negotiated settlement here, and your concern that Vladimir Putin, quote, doesn't have a way out right now. And I'm trying to figure out what we do about that. That's what Biden said, okay? Such a framework would presumably include incentives to end hostilities, including some form of sanctions relief and bringing together the international community to establish security guarantees for a free and independent Ukraine that are acceptable for all parties, particularly Ukrainians. The alternative to diplomacy is protracted war, with both its attendant certainties and catastrophic and unknowable risk. And, and by the way, just so you know, there's 13 million Ukrainians that have been displaced. Okay, 13 million. That's, it's probably higher now. The conflict threatens an additional tens of millions more worldwide, as skyrocketing prices in wheat, fertilizer, and fuel spark acute crises in global hunger and poverty. Remember, this is because Russia is a major exporter of fertilizer, Ukraine exports wheat, Russia exports fuel, etc., right? So it affects the whole world, not just that region. The conflict has also contributed to elevated gas and food prices at home, fueling inflation and high oil prices for Americans in recent months. Right? That's what, we, that's what I've been... I've been talking about with you guys for months that this this doesn't just affect russia like they they claim the sanctions there's blowback at home they say that they agree with the administration's perspective that uh, the u.s shouldn't pressure ukraine but its legislators responsible for the expenditure of tens of billions of u.s taxpayer dollars in military assistance in the conflict we believe such involvement in this war also creates a responsibility for the u.s to seriously explore all possible avenues, including direct engagement with Russia, to reduce harm and support Ukraine in achieving a peaceful settlement. And they say, they quote Zelensky here, the president of Ukraine, who even himself said back in May that war, quote, will only and definitively end through diplomacy. Okay? In conclusion, we urge you to make vigorous diplomatic efforts in support of a negotiated settlement and ceasefire, engage in direct talks with Russia, explore prospects for a new European security arrangement, acceptable to all parties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is signed by Pramila Jaipal, so she's the, the head of the caucus, Cory Bush. You know, it's about 30 of them, okay? It's about 30 of them. And 
the letter comes out and they're immediately embarrassed. They're immediately embarrassed and they put out this statement withdrawing the letter. Okay, so look, it's just one day, October 25th, just the day after. They say the Congressional Progressive Caucus hereby withdraws its recent letter to the White House regarding Ukraine. The letter was drafted several months ago, but unfortunately was released by staff without vetting. As chair of the caucus, I accept responsibility for this because of the timing. Our message is being conflated by some as being equivalent to the recent statement by Republican leader McCarthy threatening an end to aid to Ukraine if Republicans take over. The proximity of these statements created the unfortunate appearance that Democrats, who have strongly and unanimously supported and voted for every package of military, strategic, and economic assistance to the Ukrainian people, are somehow aligned with Republicans who seek to pull the plug on American support for President Zelensky and the Ukrainian forces. <laughs> wow. I mean, come on. They think we would conflate them with Republicans? Who would do that? Who would do that? They're nothing alike. So, uh, just to remind you, the last I recall, you had 57 out of 213 um, out of 213 House Republicans who voted no on the $40 billion aid package to Ukraine. This is a few months back in May. So, the majority of Republicans overwhelmingly support aid to Ukraine, just like the overwhelming majority of Democrats. But the, the Democratic Party, because they're in power now, you know, they, they kind of take the, the torch from Trump or Bush, and, and they are now the war party. And then when Republicans get back into power, they'll do the same crap as well. Remember, Trump, he sent 47, how, how, many, how, much, um, how many millions did he send uh, Ukraine back in, uh, what, what is this, 2017? He sent them uh, uh, $47 million worth of weapons. He sent them the javelins, right, which, which have, been, have, have proven to be very effective. And so Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is also uh, upset by this letter, right? How dare you? Diplomacy is not the answer. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders said Tuesday that the Russian invasion of Ukraine had to be resisted and that the Cong Congressional Progressive Caucus was right, was right to withdraw a letter that urged Biden to negotiate an end to the war with Putin. Quote, I don't agree with that. And they don't agree with it, apparently. Sanders told Semaphore in a phone interview. He said it was withdrawn today, so it becomes a non-issue. And Sanders also dismissed the claim from some candidates and some protesters who have called progressive members of Congress warmongers over their votes to fund Ukraine's counteroffensive. Sanders said, Democrats? Warmongers? When you have Putin breaking all kinds of international laws, unleashing an incredibly disgusting and horrific level of destruction against the people of Ukraine. So Bernie Sanders sounds like the State Department, basically. Okay. Now, are we surprised by this? No. No, of course not. Um, you know, giving... Let me, let me please just show you the figures, because when I show you the numbers, your heads are going to fucking explode. OK, Let, let's see how much money has been given to Ukraine so far. This is this is from NBC News. It's the latest I have. OK, so. Up until now, Congress has allocated 65 billion dollars in funding to Ukraine since February. The new aid package, there's another one coming, which would most likely be part of an omnibus spending bill, could be within the range of roughly 50 billion dollars. $50 billion. You know, $65 billion wasn't enough. They got to add $50 billion in there. Keep in mind, Israel uh, has received $38 billion uh, in its 10-year package. Okay, so it's $3.8 billion each year, but in total, over 10 years, it's $38 billion. This year, the U.S. has given Ukraine more money than it has given Israel in the last 10 years. I, I bet they're quite jealous right now. And they want, to, they want to double it, basically. Almost double it, right? $65 billion plus $50 billion. Man, people in the U.S. don't even get that money. If you asked for $65 or, or $50 billion, right, in, in help for, I don't know, um, paying off student loan debts, right? Or let's say for, for health care. For health care. You know, this is basic right that every uh, so-called industrialized country has. They would tell you to fuck off. They would tell you to go and screw yourself. If you, if you, an American citizen, you asked for 50 billion, just for healthcare, just so people can have healthcare, they would say, screw you, go to hell. Remember Biden, 
<laughs> Biden said he was going to give people ten thousand dollars to forget uh, to to pay off uh, federal loan debts, and he canceled that. Even even this ten thousand bucks, he withdrew it. Ten thousand bucks. That's nothing. That's a drop in the ocean compared to fifty billion. And then. You remember when, when he took power, they had these, like, checks that they were giving people? They said, no, 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 no. We promised you 2000 but Trump gave you 600 just a few months ago. So, you know, technically, we just owe you 1400 Like, they're they trying to scam people out of 600 fucking dollars. Wow. Wow. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not even American, and I'm fuming. I'm fuming at this. Th this is so outrageous. Like, they just piss money away for weapons for for not not even to defend the US it's other other countries and 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 they're using Ukraine to mess with Russia so it's it's not it's not even necessary the whole war could have been avoided with diplomacy right this it didn't need to happen didn't need to happen and then they give you crumbs they give people nothing nothing they always always have excuses for for weapons and for war but they, but everything else screw you go to hell no nothing nothing it's not it's not even in the discussion who's even talking about this is it is anyone talking about this no it's not even brought up it's not even a thing it's gone gone now let me show you the reactions from from i mean th this is look glenn put together a couple of uh, uh tweets from matt dust matt dust is bernie sanders foreign policy advisor okay and i want to show you just like the caucus itself, in how in the span of 24 hours, he flip-flops. First, he says, oh, the letter is great. And then, you know, tw 24 hours later, when Bernie and Jayapal have, have, have ditched the letter and walked it back, he's like, oh, yeah, that, no, no, this is uh, that, that thing. No, no, no. This, the bad, bad timing, bad timing, bad timing. You know, di diplomacy is good in spring, but in autumn, it's, it's kind of out, right? It's not in fashion in, in, in fall. You need, you need some more weapons in fall. Right, diplomacy, they don't mix together, okay? <laughs> like, there's, there's a bad time for diplomacy. Okay, here's what he said. Here's Matt Duss. Okay, he said, this is a good letter, right? The, the letter that I just read to you, to, to, that they sent to Biden. Matt Duss says, this is a good letter. It backs the administration's continuing support for Ukraine. It urges more aggressive U.S. diplomatic effort to identify possible ceasefire options while making clear that no agreement will be made without Ukraine. Here's another one. Quote, so he was responding to, to, to someone criticizing the letter, right? He said that uh, um, what the letter actually says is that, quote, we agree with the administration's perspective that it is not America's place to pressure Ukraine's government regarding sovereign decisions. Okay, and he's, he's like telling this uh, a person called Tom Watson, consider reading it next time, right? So remember, this is, this is October 24th. Let's go to October 25th, right? The same guy, Matt Dust, says, My assessment of the letter's contents isn't as harsh as some, but there's no question that the timing and lack of consideration here were disastrous, right? The folks who precipitously pushed the letter out have done real damage to the progressive foreign policy project. No, 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 man. You have done, you, AOC, Bernie Sanders, have done extremely, uh, extreme damage and great damage to progressive quote unquote foreign policy. I don't know if you ever even have one, because all I see is progressives giving weapons to israel giving weapons to ukraine to screw with russia like poking a, a bear that has more nuclear weapons than you that that way well, that's very sound foreign policy you're a fucking ambassador you are well done let me show you ilhan omar she said that timing is everything in public policy letters are written to respond to a moment in, and in politics moments pass in the speed of light in this particular case the letter was a response to intelligence we were getting on the war and the pathway forward once in a while, they do release letters preemptively. Uh, sorry, not preemptively, but too late. And she said, this is very frustrating. Once you sign on to a letter, it's up to the original drafters. And unfortunately, not all of them will keep folks updated. That is why some of us don't sign on to letters without direct insight into when or how it will be released. So do you see what's going on? They're, they're, they're putting... They're using this excuse that, oh, well, we wrote this in June and it was only released yesterday and it doesn't fit what's going on in the war. You know, like we were OK with diplomacy in June, but now we're not OK with diplomacy because of th the things that are happening. What, what things exactly? Like I, I'm struggling to understand what, what happened. The, the Russian diplomatic corps has been wiped out in a missile strike. What, what happened? Why, why, is, why is it not a good idea? It, it's even more important to do it now because Biden himself, your president, and the, you know, uh, um, who's also a Democrat, is saying 
that we're closer to nuclear war than ever before. They even wrote that in the letter. They put that in the letter, and it's true. You know, the Crimea Bridge has been blown up since they wrote this letter. The Nord Stream pipelines were blown up since they wrote this letter. What the fuck are they waiting for? Are they waiting for the apocalypse to, to publish an, a letter after that? When, when, when is a good time? When, when there's a nuclear winter, is that a good time for you? I'm, I'm offended and fucking fuming that these incompetent morons are the ones that are fueling this war, that are signing the checks to, to, to screw with Russia and use the Ukrainian people to screw with Russia while they sit comfortably in Capitol Hill. You know, they, they get to hide in a bunker if nukes come. We don't. We don't have bunkers. Okay, the rest of us. These guys have bunkers. They do. They'll be rushed off by security and put into nice fallout shelters with food and nice things. You know, they can, they can maybe wait it out. The rest of the world, you know, if there's a nuclear strike, everything's going to be over in like 30 minutes. If, if, maybe a few hours, but it's going to be over in minutes. In minutes. The Russians have something called dead hand, even if, even if there's a, a nuclear strike on, on the Kremlin right now. And they kill Putin, and they kill Shoigu, and they kill Medvedev, they kill everybody, the entire general staff, all the Russian generals, the president, you name it. The Russians still have systems in place to launch nukes at, at Washington and a whole other bunch of cities. We, we don't even know where they're pointed because that's secret. And, and it's, it's over. You, you, you don't fix this by, by, by war. You've got to fix it with diplomacy. And these clowns are saying, oh, it's not the right time. No, no, it, it's, it's very much, <laughs> the time is, is very ripe. Here, let me show you Ro Khanna. I think, again, I, I've criticized Ro Khanna a lot. Specifically, this guy's wife has stocks in seven weapons manufacturers, so she's probably making bank from this war. Let me just play you this clip of him on CNN. Take a look. So this has turned really into a messy own goal on the part of your caucus. What happened? Well, Bianna, let me just say what my position is, which matters. I have supported every package of giving aid to Ukraine, and I plan to support continuing to arm Ukraine. All the letter said is that we, at the same time that we stand with Ukraine, need to make sure that we're reducing the risk for nuclear war, that we're engaging in talks with the Russians to make sure that the conflict doesn't escalate. We need to support Ukraine with arms, and we need diplomacy. That's common sense. Well, Congresswoman Jayapal seemed to suggest that this letter was a mistake. It was drafted, signed several months ago, and she's rescinded it. Do you not support that move? I don't. I think the letter was common sense. I support, I support making sure we arm Ukraine and provide arms to Ukraine and continue to fund it. Uh, but I also believe that the president, as he said, we're at a risk of nuclear war. Don't you think our counterparts should be talking to Russia? Of course they should to make sure that it doesn't escalate. And you know, my position is similar to what former Joint Chiefs of, Chief of Staff Mullen has said, what other senior military leaders have said. Yes, let's stand with Ukraine, but let's also support diplomacy. So, so you still support this letter. It was said to have been drafted and signed early this summer. When did you sign it? Probably in the summer, around June or July. I don't remember the exact date. Well, the reason that I'm asking is because I looked at the timeline of the right. war and what was taking place around then. So I just want to read off some of these events. June 27th, Russian missiles target a shopping mall in central Ukraine, killing at least 18 people. On July 17th, President Zelensky says Russia has now fired 3,000 cruise missiles against his country. July 20th, in an interview, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Russia had departed from its original goal of occupying just two East Eastern regions, and now saying Zaporizhia and Kherson in the south were also important to take. Subsequently, they have illegally annexed all right. four. I'm just wondering what you and your fellow caucus members saw in all of this that gave you a sense that Vladimir Putin was serious about coming to the table and discussing a ceasefire, given all of that was going on at the time. Well, Bianna, first of all, I've been very clear that the war is brutal, it's unprovoked, and the fault is Russia's. And after that, I voted for packages to arm Ukraine. I mean, honestly, that, that timeline that she just read out, that, that was like an average day of U.S. forces in Iraq. Not even a day. That was an average hour, right? Remember, they killed 15,000 civilians just, just in the invasion, right? And, and in total, one million Iraqis killed. But yeah, okay, they care about shopping malls now. You remember how they would just bomb a wedding in, in Yemen or Pakistan or a funeral? And they'd say, well, we didn't know. It's collateral damage, right? America always has the... the, 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 the 
excuse of we didn't know it was an accident you know it's okay for us to kill civilians it's collateral damage we're sorry we just we had to do it there was no other way we didn't know and everybody else all oh, look at those evil bastards look at what they're doing they bombed a shopping mall you pioneered this shit man don't start pointing fingers now let me let me just tell you something because there there's a statement here from republicans that they're going to get into office with the midterms this is mccarthy right who's 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 uh, um who is saying this and and they're saying some of them, not all of them, some of them are saying that if the GOP takes the midterms, that they're going to cut funding to Ukraine. I don't think that's accurate. They didn't say that. They said that they're, they're not going to write a blank check to Ukraine. That doesn't mean they're going to cut funding. They will still fund it. Like, like I said, Trump, Trump was sending them weapons before, before there was anything. Before, you know, he, he, was, he, wasn't, uh, he was doing this years before Russia invaded Ukraine. OK, that that is really important to understand, because the timeline that they give you is all screwed up. They say it started in February uh, on February 24th. No, this this started several years ago, several, several years ago. This has been going on for a long time. But I, ju I just want to show you um, this. This is from Mark Tanako. So he's a d Democratic, um, a Democrat from California. He says only Ukrainians have a right to determine the terms by which the war ends. And that's kind of similar to what others are saying, right? So they're, 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 they're basically responding to the letter by saying, well, this letter is unacceptable. Diplomacy is unacceptable because the Ukrainians are the ones who should be deciding that. Okay? So what I would, what I would say to that is great, wonderful, you know, because for, for many, many decades, they've been saying the Palestinians are responsible for their own fate. They said, well, the Arabs, the Arabs, they refused to accept the 1947 partition plan, right, that, that the UN adopted. Um, and, you know, the, it, it, the Arabs, they just won't come and sit at the table and talk, right? The Arabs are so violent. Oh, the Arabs are terrorists. That's all you hear. This garbage, this, this racist, trash, imperialist nonsense from CNN, from the Israelis, from BBC, over and over for decades. And now, now suddenly, it's okay to just press on, you know, to keep the war going, because it's up to Ukrainians to decide when the war ends. Great. So it's up to Palestinians to decide when the war ends. It's up to Syrians to decide when the war ends, okay? There's no diplomacy with Israel. That's not happening. It's never happening, right? Since you want to play this game, right? So they, they, they'll pressure the Arabs to do diplomacy with Israel and recognize Israel, who's occupying their territory. But, but when it comes to Ukraine, it's, hey, screw diplomacy, press on, here's $50 billion, here's $65 billion, bomb the crap out of the Russians, keep going, even, even if it risks World War III. You see, you see the double standard? You see the double standard? They're really funny, man. They're really funny. And, and this, this, this uh, um, tucking their tail between their legs and running and, and, and you know, basically uh, uh, w walking back this letter, it shows you number one, they are cowards. They are cowards, and number two, they are warmongers. Th this this proves it more than anything else. This proves it more than the the them sending the weapons. You know, because they never distanced themselves from the weapons. They didn't like vote for it and say, oh, you know what, that was that was a maybe that wasn't a good idea to send weapons to Ukraine. But they did it with a letter. Oh, oh no, that letter. I shouldn't have signed that letter. You know, diplomacy is really. It's not in this season. <laughs> okay, so, you know, in your own words, you, you don't want diplomacy with Russia, and you think that war is the answer. Wow. That, that's, that's really great for the rest of the world, you know? Uh, I hope the view looks nice from your bunker when the nukes start falling. <laughs> Again, here's, here's from the Associated Press. This is Biden. October 7th, just a few weeks ago. Okay? So, Biden himself, warning. The world is at risk of nuclear Armageddon. That's him, his, him saying that, not my words. They're his words. Okay? And, I, and, and you don't need to be a genius to figure that one out anyway, because this is something that's been clear since before I was even born, that since the Cold War, you have mutually assured destruction. If, if someone fires a nuclear weapon, it's over, because the other side will fire them, and it will just... The, the, Europe, Russia, and North America will be gone in half an hour. Half an hour, that's all it takes, man. And there are many times in the Cold War when the Russians or the Americans thought there were nuclear missiles incoming. They, they, the data was not correct on the radar, okay? You know, they, they, they have sensors, they have outposts, they have ships, they have all sorts of, of, of um, uh, systems 
that are whose sole purpose is early warning detection. Okay, their only purpose is to check what's going on. They have satellites also. Is is that a nuclear missile? They can read the heat signature the heat signature of the of the missile. They have many, many ways to do this, right? To gather intelligence very quickly and, and estimate if there's a threat. And even then, with these highly sophisticated systems, they made mistakes. And it's just it's pure coincidence. It's just dumb, blind luck that they decided not to fire nuclear weapons in response, which would have been in response to a false positive. There was no nuke, right? They, 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 the Russians thought at one moment the Americans would fire nuclear missiles. Turned out they didn't, right? And thank God they didn't fire nuclear missiles in response because the whole world would have ended over an error, a mistake. Of, from, it could be from one analyst, some guy sitting at a table. You know, humans make mistakes. And, and is that what they're, they're trying to uh, um, press for here? I'll, I'll remind you, when, when Trump killed Soleimani in Iran, what happened in the days after that? The Iranians shot down a civilian airliner with Ukrainians, right? It, it wasn't a Ukrainian plane. I think most of the people in it were, were Iranian, but um, uh, who, you, you still had Ukrainians. And, you know, that shows you that everybody starts to be on edge because Trump had, had killed Soleimani and then he threatened to, to retaliate on, on um, dozens of sites in Iran. So he put the Iranians on edge and some guy made a mistake and shot down uh, 200 civilians, killed for, for nothing because they thought it was a U.S. bomber. So the, what do you think is going to happen here when the stakes are 50 million times higher? These goddamn fools, man. Goddamn fools. There you go. Democrats, Republicans, they are all warmongers because they, they are, these people don't work for you and they don't work for peace. They work for people who make a living killing others, okay? They, they, they work for, for banks, for corporations, and for arms manufacturers. It's always been that way. Don't, don't expect anything different from these people. They're not progressive. They're fucking neoconservatives. End of story.